The German Army of World War II was divided into four different units. The Heer, Kriegsmarine, Luftwaffe and Schutzstaffel. In this video I will assemble minifigures and build mocks for all four of them. If you are interested in military history I highly recommend to subscribe to don't miss any further content. But let's start with the first build. I will start with the Heer which was divided in dozens of other units. In the beginning of every build I will assemble two minifigures for each unit. I've decided to go with the classic combo of an K98 as well as an MP40 gunner. The heads are official Lego products and the weapons are printed and regular brick arms. And most important all printed bodies you will see in this video are printed by a company called Minific Co. Each build will include one vehicle and for this one I've decided to go with my SDKFC 251 also known as SDKFZ 251. You can also purchase instructions on rebreakable.com for this one. A link is in the description down below. But let's start building the first mock which will include a free form as base. The mock depicts a scene during the Caucasus battles in 1943. The the Caucasus region is known for their rocky landscape and that's why I've decided to go with a freeform using a lot of different types of slopes because I think this perfectly represents that area. Here is the technique I just came up with while building this model. These planes consist out of bar pieces which allowed me to stick them through this headlight brick and place it at the pin. Now I just had to connect the rest of the modules and the freeform was done. Now it's time to build the rest of the mock where the SDKFC actually can stand. As you can see I've started by building these filler bricks in the back. I've then continued building the landscape and my main goal during that was to build several layers to achieve the most natural look as possible. I've also added a tiny rock for some extra color. In my opinion the colors I've used like the olive green, dark tan and dark bluish gray perfectly works together for the Caucasus region. And after placing the vehicle, the first build is done. The build depicts members of the German 17 Armee looking for enemy positions. The soldiers wearing the M40 Feldbluse and Gamaschen at their legs. The soldier at the left was awarded with an Eastern Front Medal and the EK2. The second unit I want to build a mock for is the Kriegsmarine. Their main tasks were to serve on battleships or submarines. This first minifigure is a regular seaman, also known as Matrose. I've decided to give him a Lego head as well as this cap. The second minifigure is his Carloy. As you can see he comes with an EK1 as well as an EK2. I've decided to give him a beard head as well as this captain head. As it is unrealistic to build a whole submarine for this video, I've decided to just build a turret. I've recreated a Type 9 sea U-boat, which is by the way the German word for submarine. The most important thing to build was the skeleton where I can now attach all the panels I've already prepared. As you can see it needed a lot of modified bricks with studs on the side to build this one. To achieve the typical shape of this turret I've decided to use a mix of curved slopes as well as regular tiles. Of course I had to attach the same panels at the other side as well. And here's the main part of the turret. I've decided to raise some parts of the panel to achieve the needed details. Now it's time to finish the tail of the turret. I've also designed a 3.7 cm flag by using a brick arm sparrow. It is turnable and you can lift and depress the gun. Now I had to achieve the typical rounded shape of the turret by using these curved slopes. I've also managed to attach the handrail onto them. For the back I've decided to add this red flag which of course is centered. After adding the front slope I just had to attach some antennas and the turret was done. Now I want to build a cool display for it where the U-boat just appears from under sea. After tiling off the surface where the U-boat will stand it was time to design the whole ocean. I will use a combination of these three pieces to simulate water fontaine as you can see right here. I've also added our carloy holding binoculars and looking for allied ships. I've started by attaching the fontaines at the front of the U-boat. I've stacked together the pieces in a random way to achieve the most natural look as possible. As all of this is pretty repetitive work I've decided to continue with building the ocean. I've used a combination of 1x2 tiles in blue as well as 1x1 studs to achieve a most natural look of moving waves. The whole process was quite flimsy and took a lot of time but you are lucky because I will speed up all the builds and you will see the final product in only 10 seconds. The rough and cold Atlantic Ocean was a place of heavy sea fights. Our U-boat Type 9 C-Class is looking for light supply ships. The flag just got manned because enemy planes are near. And here's a closer look at both of our crew members.
Let's continue with the Luftwaffe, which was a feared unit, especially in the beginning of World War II. The first pilot is wearing a brown leather jacket as well as dark tan pants. I've gave him a Soldbuch, which was basically the ID of the German soldiers during World War II. The next pilot is wearing a black leather jacket as well as the typical light blue pants. This time I've used custom printed heads for both minifigures as well as hair pieces. I've added the dual molded P38 Walter made by Brick Arms as well as a cigarette to him. This art concept shows a German airfield and that's exactly what I want to build now. I've prepared the black frame, grabbed my Stuka designed by Tiger131 and started building the airfield. The brown stripes are supposed to look like marks which the Stuka created while starting. I've decided to go with a mix of olive green and regular green and added some plants. After finishing the landscape I've decided to build a small table where the soldiers can place their guns, maps and other stuff. As you can see it doesn't need a lot of pieces to make some cool designs but always use some unique parts like this bar piece I've used for the legs of the table. Thanks to the holes of the studs I was able to attach them to the table. This green area is the perfect place for our freshly made table. I've also added a wooden crate as well as jerry cans next to it and added the map as well as the Soldbuch on top of the table. After adding a few more plants at the green area the third build was done. As the Stuka was flown by two pilots of course I had to add both of them next to it. Both of them discussing their next operation, which will start very soon. And as usual, here again is a closer look at both minifigures. The fourth and final unit is the Schutzstaffel. It was supposed to be the superior unit of the German army geared out with the best weapons and vehicles. They also received a lot of camouflaged cloth and of course I had to use one of these in my build. I've decided to go with the MG team wearing the Eichenlaubschlupfhemden. The MG gunner also comes with rolled up sleeves, which is a detail I really like. After attaching the matching helmets and weapons to the minifigures, these are done. Now it's time to build the scenery for them and I once again already prepared the black frame. The soldiers are supported by my custom made panther tank. This was firstly used during the Operation Citadel, also known as the Battle of Kursk. It took place in 1943 and was the largest tank battle in history yet. I will build a cornfield where the panther is driving through and the soldiers are taking cover behind him. But first I will place a big tree next to the panther tank and I have a special idea for this one. This tree will perfectly fit into the circle I've just made and is actually an official lego set. The tree is placed at a rounded 6x6 plate which perfectly ends up with my circle. I have to say that I love how the panther looks next to the tree. I've then came up with five slightly different designs for the wheat field. I've grabbed all my dark tent tiles and plates and started stacking all the wheat field parts onto the mock. This again was a time consuming and flimsy building process but the end result is totally worth it in my opinion. I've then prepared the surface where the panther will be and as you won't see anything of that I've decided to just use tiles. After placing wheat field elements also on the back of the build it was time to set in the panther. I've then marked the ending of the panther by using 2x2 tiles. I've made this because I needed to know where to start with the ground details. And now the whole surface underneath the tank is finally done. Next I want to implement some foliage next to the tree because there are a lot of annoying gaps at the moment. I've grabbed one of my most favorite plant pieces in the color of olive green. I will use these one by one rounded plates with a hole in the side to attach the plant pieces to the rest of the build. I've stacked together two, three, four and even five of the studs to achieve some different levels of height. To make access easier I've decided to remove the tree temporarily but I will add it now. And as you can see this perfectly fits into there. I've then surrounded the rest of the tree with the olive green plant pieces off camera. Now I just had to fill the final gaps by using wedged plates, tiles and regular plates. I've then placed the corn pieces I had left underneath the panther because he just drove through that field. The build depicts a German panther tank who just spotted three T-34 tanks and he is ready to attack them. Even though the tree is an official LEGO product, I just love how well he fits into the rest of the build. To make it look authentic, I've decided to add some ammunition belts, ammunition crates, as well as jerry cans on the top of the panther. And here's a final look onto the last minifigures. Feel free to comment down below which of these four your personal favorite was. I for myself can't really choose one, but if I have to I would say this is my most favorite one. Please let me know if you want to see more detailed videos of each of these units. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye bye.